Good day. I'm still finishing up everything else here. Hopefully you've had a fantastic weekend, guys. And to all my um, religious friends uh, that are of the Muslim religion, Eid Mubarak, and hopefully you are enjoying or you're rested or whatever way um, you're celebrating. Deborah, thank you so much for tuning in. I, I think this is one of your first uh, live sessions with us. Nicole, hope you had a fantastic weekend. I think it's still Sunday where you at, so that should be fine. All right, so I was just putting in together um, our live show today, so I'm going to put it here so that I don't run out of track. But guys, today I want to talk about the reasons why you actually should not be an entrepreneur. I know this is like so stupid and somebody's going to be like, why the hell is he doing that? But I've got reasons for this guy. Simran, thank you so much. Hope you had a fantastic um, uh, weekend. And if you are celebrating Eid Mubarak, my friend. Okay, so you're here and you want the unlimited vacation. You want to get rich. You want to be famous. Um, you know, you want to travel in the jets. You want to wear expensive suits and all that jazz. Don't fall for it, guys. It's a trap. <laughs> you know what, this may all be benefits, but suddenly these are not the reasons why one should actually start a business, okay? Because you're going to do all these things, you're going to see all these uh, vacations, you're going to see all these laptop lifestyles. You should know that these laptop lifestyles only exist in deceitful Facebook ads, Okay, Josh De La Rosa, thank you so much for tuning in, all right? So everybody else might be showing you how they're vacationing, everybody might be showing you exactly, you know, what they're doing with their Lamborghini or their Ferrari, which they probably rented. Guys, let's get down to the skinny of what it is actually to be an entrepreneur. Now, Kimberly Bishop says, very enthusiastic, I love it. I believe this is your first one with me. Um, I do this every single day, like I said in the ad group. So obviously, it's one of those things that I take you on a journey so that you can be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable, okay? Uh, my name is Prosper Taruinga, by the way, founder and CEO of Live Long Digital. Barbara, thank you so much for tuning in. Kimberly, right there. Right, so there we are. We're talking about, you know, the trap of entrepreneurship and how some people fail just because of what they've been told or what they've been sold to. Every time you see an entrepreneur, you are not seeing the 10,000 hours that go behind every, you know, thing that they put out. Okay, Barbara, thank you so much for tuning in. There's 10,000 hours that go in for you to see a two-second commercial. There's 10,000 hours that go in for you to see this 30-minute video. There's 10,000 hours that go in for you to see anything that an entrepreneur produces. Okay, all we get to see is the end result. Nobody tells you about the breakups they went through. Nobody tells you about the disown, how their family disowned them. Nobody tells you about how they broke up with their wife, their girlfriend. Nobody tells you about how their car, their house was taken away from them. Nobody tells you that. And you know why? Because you don't care. You only want to hear what you want to hear. Why would it benefit you if Elon Musk told you that he's gone through three different wives in order for him to sit where he's sitting right now? What would it benefit you if you heard that Mark Zuckerberg went through all that drive to, to, go, to, to, to actually create a business that he now has? All right? There might be a lot of really, really good reasons for you to become an entrepreneur, guys, but we are now living in a place, you know, where it's actually celebrated to become an entrepreneur. A lot of these people that are ahead of us, they're not saying, they're not giving you the whole story. Okay? Um, Barbara says, I'm working on my VA manuals and my lead generation manual. And yes, lots and lots of behind the scenes hours of work. And guess what? When you put that uh, lead generation or that lead magnet thing, it only takes three seconds for somebody to decide whether they want to leave their email address and, and do your program or not, right? Okay, it only takes three seconds for somebody to skip an ad on YouTube while you spend hours. Oh. 
Okay, sorry, we got a little bit disconnected there. I think my wireless connection is acting up, but I hope you're still tuned in, all right? So, you know, even most of us that never really take the plunge of going into entrepreneurship, we, we sit there and we're fantasizing and we're thinking, you know, what would it be like if I owned, you know, this company and I had all these people working for me and I was producing all these products? Do you know what I mean? It, it seems both possible and very, very rewarding. You know what I mean? And those people that are sitting on the edges are just thinking, you know, oh, I wish I had my own business. You know what I mean? But you do not know what it takes to create and run your own business. Whether it's the creative part of it, whether it's the potential, or whether it's the feeling that you're going to be your own boss, or whether it's the feeling that you're going to be following your own passion. Don't go into it for the wrong reasons, okay? I'll tell you something. I work with um, startups and I work with people that are starting off on the entrepreneurial journey. Nine times out of ten, everybody that comes in, I ask them, why are you doing this? Who, what is your product and who cares? And most of the things are the things that I'm probably going to be talking about right now today. You know, some people, they, they, they want to do it for the vacation. Some people, they want to do it for getting rich. Some people, they want to do it for being famous. Do you know what I mean? I firmly believe that, you know, anyone with the right dedication, if you've got it in you, can actually become a successful entrepreneur. Regardless of whatever their motivations are, who am I to judge? I don't know what goes on in there, but I'm just here to report why I'm seeing a lot of us burning out. It's because we went in it for the wrong reasons. And if any of the reasons I'm going to talk about today, you know, simulate where you are, there is an antidote to it. There is something that you can do to get out of that rut so that you can actually start a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Okay, you see, these wrong reasons of becoming an entrepreneur is what we are all being, you know, painted with. It's all we are being shown the, the front beat, the facade or the facade. I don't know how to say that word. They might then, you know, constitute your motives or your motivations or the reasons why you actually then start. And you'd be likely, if you go in the, 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 the interior of it, I don't know if you guys have gone to Thailand or to Bali, you go into these places or these monasteries where the gate is like you're entering into heaven. But when you go into the place, it's dilapidated, it's sickening, it's old and nobody even lives there. All right, what we're just seeing is the face, but nobody's showing us the behind the scenes. Okay, Barbara says, hence why I'm explaining the same with new BVAs and that are entering into the industry. And many think it's easy, but it's not. My manuals are more of a business perspective like you're discussing. Thank you so much. And if anybody wants to know about how to become a VA or, you know, the processes and procedures, Barbara is your girl. Look her up in the news feed then. Okay, so a lot of us are actually suffering from burnout and we are actually failing in business. And that's why it then feels like, you know, you, you feel like you've let yourself down or you feel like you're not actually reaching your full potential. It's because of the reasons that motivated you in the first place. First of all, a lot of us think that if you get into business, you're actually going to get rich. That's a lie. All right. You know, thanks to what um, the, the popularity of you know, all these out of this world entrepreneurs, it, it now seems like you, you can now become an overnight billionaire. Do you know what I mean? You can rent those jets, you can rent those Ferraris. All right. It's not it's not going to end up as in if you watch somebody's video today, you end up having the same results as them. There's work that goes in there, guys. I was writing about this. The things that actually constitute you becoming a, a, an entrepreneur, the nutrition you got to eat, the exercise you got to you do for yourself, the socializing, you know, meeting different people every single day. I see all these young people going, oh, I want to automate this, yada, yada, yada. You automate what's already working. Do you know what I mean? There is no overnight success for you to be good at anything or for anyone to take notice. There's got to be 10,000 hours that needs to go into that. And I notice a lot of people are falling off this, um, this, this life. You know why? Because they, they don't want to hear that. But you've got to listen to this. You know why? Because you cannot just get rich by being an entrepreneur. You've got to work. All right. So it's a big, big misconception. You know what I mean? That, you know, you know, starting your own business or going into entrepreneurship is the fast track to being rich. 
You know what I mean? You know, as an owner of your own business right now, you'd be entitled to at least part of the profits. When somebody says, I made $4 million or I made $6 million, they're not going to tell you who they're paying, how much they're paying Facebook to get that. They're not going to tell you how much rent they're paying in their building. They're not going to tell you how much gas they're paying within their building to heat up. They're not going to tell you how much paper they used. They're not going to tell you it's stationary. They're just going to tell you a ballpark figure. At the end of the day, they probably walk away with maybe 20,000 of their own when, when other people collect their dues. Tax is also going to be like, what's happening, dog? Do you know what I mean? So don't just get the front part of it. You know, if you're getting into it to become rich, I'm sorry, my friend, that ain't going to happen. And if it's going to happen, it's not going to happen tomorrow. All right, so you might be entitled to at least, you know, a few portions of the profits because whatever you make, you got to plow back into your business. All right, so, you know, you, you might have that, the potential of making millions with your idea, you know, but if you're not the only person within that business, if there are other owners and in addition, you know what I mean, there's things that are going to be used so that the business actually functions, you are not getting that full profit. So you're not going to get rich from starting a business. Tell somebody that. All right? You see, however, you know, it's not going to guarantee that your business is actually going to be profitable in the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. Look at what's happening right now. Even big companies like Amazon or Walmart, they're fighting, still trying to be profitable, still trying to be relevant. Now, tell me something. They've been at it for, for longer than we can even think. You know what I mean? And now Amazon is buying uh, Whole Foods just so that they can penetrate the market somehow. Even though they are the biggest in their market, they are still competing. Now, what makes you think you're going to automate your little business right now where you are reaching to only 10 people, one of which actually cares? Yeah? Yeah? So there's not going to be any guarantee that your business is going to function. So it's certainly possible to actually, I mean, it is possible to make a living. You pay your bills, you know, everything happens, but you cannot count on striking rich in your business, even if you've got the best idea. Right now, Uber is slowly maybe falling apart if something doesn't happen to, to the whole functionality of the business. You know? So being motivated only by money would actually interfere with your ability to make long-term decisions for your business because everything is expensive. And if you're going to be, you know, you know, holding on to whatever little money that you have and not re-injecting into the business, you're wasting your time, our time, and the internet space. All right? So you've got to be able to make long-term decisions not based on the emotion of the little $200 that you just made off a client that is actually going to want their money back anyway because your product is shit. All right? So if you're in it to just be rich, guys, close up shop, close up your laptop because that's all you have that represents your business and reconsider and recalibrate. If you're going to go into business just to become famous... Go and be a model. I know, it's true, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, you know, there, there's a potential to actually increase your personality or the visibility of your brand or, you know, brand management. But if your marketing strategically relies on you having media exposure, that's not going to make you famous. You're going to be in the public eye and that hurts because you know why? You are not going to be able to do anything that people are not going to write about. So it's a trap. All those people that we see, Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, Grant Cardone or whatever, they limit themselves because they're always in the public eye. If they do anything funny, just like another time when Grant Cardone said something while he was talking to um, P Patrick B David on one of their shows. And um, uh, Grant Cardone asked to say, uh, hey, listen, can I actually call these people the N-word? That made news. Do you know what I mean? It's things that you can do in the privacy of your own home, but once you become famous, you become, you, the public starts owning you. All right? So especially, you know, you know, if you look at entrepreneurs like Mark Cuban, they're famous because they own teams and, and et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? Elon Musk is just doing crazy things every single day. Uh, Richard Branson, you know, these are high 
you know, profile people that we are shown to every single day. And, you know, whatever they do, the media runs to them. And they've attained this celebrity status. But if you're going to do it just because that's what you want, they've got teams behind them. They've got people that write out their copy. They've people that write out their speeches. They've got people that, that clean their shoes. They've got people that do stuff for them. Now, what is going to make you think that, you know, you just being yourself, you just being prosper, you're going to be famous overnight? you got to work. And if that's one of the reasons why you went into entrepreneurship again, you got to fail. Okay, so, you know, I mean, pursuing or gaining popularity is not, it's not a bad idea. I mean, we all want to be famous, even in our little towns or whatever it is. We all just want that, that exposure that we might have or, you know, the branding opportunities that it might be. But relentlessly pursuing your personal brand just because you want to be famous, you're going to run short at the end of the day. Every time you're going to be away from your office, every time you're going to be away from your real work, it's going to cost you. Do you know what I mean? It's going to cost you. Because if your idea of successful entrepreneurship is to be seen in different places, how then are you serving the clients that you're supposed to be serving? you got to survive. And Kaza says, wait, no instant riches and fame. Of course. It don't work like that. One second. Yeah, it was, it was getting a bit warm in here, so I had to switch off uh, something. Yeah, you, it's, no, it's no overnight success. And especially if you're doing it to get onto unlimited vacations and etc, etc. You get paid according to the value that you're bringing into the marketplace. And yes, it's true. You know, as an entrepreneur, you, you make your own schedule, you wake up in the morning, you do whatever you want, you set your own hours, you know what I mean? You, 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 you work whatever days that you want, and you, know, you take unlimited vacations that you want. But remember, remember, your business success is actually going to depend on the effort you actually put in it. And unfortunately, the reality is your first business might actually not even go off or even the business that you're in, if you're not taking care of it as if it was a baby that needs to be nurtured, that needs to be fed, that needs the diaper changed every single time, it's not going to work. And Kaz says, how about all the people buying products and making millions in a month or less than a year? Show me somebody who's doing it. Show me somebody who's actually starting now and, 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 and making those millions in one year has years and years and years of stuff that you don't see behind the scenes. It's not going to be overnight success. Show me somebody like that, uh, Kaza, and then I'll, I'll respond back to you. All right? So if you're an entrepreneur and you're busy traveling every six months of the year or you're in Bali or you're wherever you are, you won't have enough time to invest in your business to actually help you become successful. Can you imagine if a client really needs something to, 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 to happen right now, do you know what I mean? And you're not reachable. You're not contactable. Guess who they're going to call? They're going to call Barbara. They're going to call Brand. They're going to call Prosper. You know why? Because they are available. And Barbara says, love your work, Prosper. <laughs> I got to get uh, to some calls. Chat soon. Of course, Barbara. Thank you so much for tuning in. You don't have to watch um, you know, the whole thing or you can watch um, this in post-production. Right, so you're grossly underestimating what work is needed for you to actually become an entrepreneur. Unless you're just some small business person that depends on some systems, then I don't want to hear your story. Do you know what I mean? So instead, chances are you won't have time for regular days off. Or maybe if you're lucky, you might have two or three. You know why? Because you are the janitor in your office. You're the, the paper collector. You're the person that does every single job. Where is the vacation time there? If you, if you feel like you need space or whatever, go prospecting. Meet people. Go socializing. Because the more you are bringing your business out and meeting other people, the more you're connecting those relationships and people will refer your business. Okay? Another reason why some people go into business really is um, to make other people happy. And Kaza says, dang, the online marketers selling products say if you follow their programs, it's one million in a year. Yeah, well, we all know that it's... Yeah, it, it, it works for those that really like shiny objects, 
All right. So if you're going to be in business to actually make people happy, if you're if you're in business to make people happy, you are losing that battle already. You know, some some entrepreneurs go into business, you know, they just start because they like the idea of being, you know, a positive force around the world. You know what? I respect that. That's that's some something that I I want to do as well. I want to impact a few people to be do and have a life that's worth um, living and is profitable and enjoyable. And and and, and I want to build a great team and I want to take care of my employees and I want to make my clients happy. And you know what? I want to I also want to make the world a better place. But it doesn't stop there. Unfortunately, this mentality will actually break your business. You know why? Because you start making poor business decisions. For example, let me show you something. If you are likely to have or keep unproductive workers around you, do you know what I mean? They're not doing their work. They're not reporting on work on time. They're not keeping to a schedule. Just because you want to keep them happy, just because you want to make them happy, is that going to help your business or your bottom line at the end of the day? So rather than making those tough decisions to actually fire those dodos, do you know what I mean? You are now being forced to work with unproductive people. Just because you created that bond with them. You know, so you would have entered into entrepreneurship just because you want to help people. But if those people are not going to be willing to help you, then what good are they in keeping them? That also goes for customers as well. Some of us are keeping unprofitable clients day in and day out just because we refuse to move on. You know, you, you, you will sacrifice all the time with your family. You're going to sacrifice all the time that you're supposed to be doing productive stuff just to make people that are, even, that are not even going to buy from you happy. Do you know what I mean? You know, you, you may be willing to make all these sacrifices, but your business is not going to do anybody any good if you end up folding or closing shop just because you were trying to make other people happy that don't even appreciate you in the first place. So as a business owner, you really want to, your primary responsibility should be actually to make the right decisions for your business for it to last longer than next week. And Justin says, awesome, I'm live streaming you to my sons while eating lunch in Singapore. Oh, that's, that's pretty amazing, uh, Justin. And it is a lunch and learn anyway. So this is, this is how we um, uh, I try and create these this, um, live streams. And if you've been watching this and you like what you're watching right now, please share it. Because there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that are just running around like headless chooks. And the reasons why they don't understand why they're not getting a profit, why they're not getting clients, is because of the reasons they started in the first place. So just like what Justin is doing, um, you know, as a parent, the position you got to be is sort of like a parent. If you're a parent of, of, of people that are not working properly or they're not producing, all you got to do, you know, is, is, is start treating your business like a child. It's up to you to protect it. It's up to you to nurture it. And after all, if you don't do it, who will? You know, I ask some people sometimes and I'm like, hey, so why did you start your business and, and what, why is it important or why is it relevant for you? And then you get some people that just say, eh, why not? Why not is the worst reason to start a business, period. Do you know what I mean? You may not have a specific motivation and, and you might just have an idea and you know what I mean? And, 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 and the impression that, you know, you know, anyone can become a business owner. You know, at that point, what, what is happening in your mind is you might be thinking to yourself, yeah, why not? Why not just start a business? You know, why not start building something even if it's on the side? You know, because you've got no reason to actually be there. You know, this is very whimsical. Guys, I don't want to lie. It's a whimsical approach that does not even give you any single chance of success. But it's more likely, you know... You, you can start the business. It will start. It will go further than next week or two weeks. But you have no idea why your business exists. Oh, and Brent says, great energy. Thank you so much. It's, it's amazing to have you on this live, sir. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. Yeah? So, you know, you might not have a financial model. You might not even have a process right now. You might not even have a system to follow. Do you know what you need to do in order to scale? It depends on how or why you started that business.
Do you even know how much capital you need to start and what your competitors are like? Do you even have the psychology or the is your psychology really, really strong enough to, to, to withstand all the neglect, all the um, rejection, etc., etc.? Are you actually familiar with the dark truths of entrepreneurship and where the reasons that you started, the, the right reasons? The reason I'm talking today like this is because we are six months into the year right now. And uh, Justin says, so true, not everyone is your client. For you and your business, I will refer clients to other service providers if I believe we're on a match. Why? Because I'm still helping them even, yep. Yeah. Awesome. Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, if these motivations, you know, sort of represent only a portion of what's driving you, you really need to sit down with you, yourself, and you. Because they're going to sabotage your efforts. If you went in to become rich, if you went in for the vacations, if you went in to be famous, if you went in just because you wanted to help people, sit back today. Audit yourself. How long have you been in that business? The reason why, because you're chasing something that maybe was not meant to be. We are just in an era right now where entrepreneurship seems to be the way to go. If we were maybe 15 years ago, not 15, if we were 50 years ago, everybody was going to the war. So, you know, that was the thing for that time. Going to war, going to war, going to war. That's exactly what's happening right now. Just go into entrepreneurship. Why? You know, I don't know. Because everybody else is going. And then they came a time in Britain and, um, you know, all those European uh, places where it was all about colonization. Get as much of the world as you can as possible. Men, women were shipped across here to Australia, to Africa. If you ask them, why are you here? They say, I don't know. We're just here. We were told that's where, you know, new beginnings are. This is the new colonization. Everybody's just being shipped onto the online space. And you don't know why you're there. You wake up one morning and you're like, oh, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be wearing this badge of honor of being an entrepreneur. But why am I here? So sometimes most of these motivations might just represent only a portion of what's driving you. But probably, guys, don't ignore this because it will actually sabotage your reasons for success. For example, if you, if, if you like the idea of becoming rich, okay, if you like the idea of financial independence, etc., etc., you, you might also be interested in being your own boss and maybe working, uh, you know, with a team of people that you get to choose, you know, with your, and, and all this is monetary, you know what I mean? And your motivations... These are likely to interfere with the exact happiness of your own existence. All right? Because if you want money, you're going to have to in interact with people. Some of us don't even enjoy speaking to the next person. Some of us don't even enjoy talking on the phone. Some of us don't even enjoy writing an email. Then how are you going to make those people pay you money if you can't talk to them? How are you going to make those people make you money if you can't even call them? All right? So there's, there's a lot of good reasons, you know, you can become an entrepreneur. But before you take the next step, guys, before stuff is not working within your business, find out. Is it, is it the system that's not working? Is it, is, it, is, it, is it the social media that's not working? Is it the, um, um, is it the program that I'm on? Is it the platform? Is it the business? Many of the problems are stemming with the actual reason why you went in and said, this is what I'm going to do. I know a lot of us are afraid of being a F-O-F-W-A-W, -W, a fine old fart with a watch. But maybe that's, that's the best option. Because what, what good are you going to be to your clients if you're going to be burned out? What good are you going to be to the people around you if you're not going to be there? What good are you going to be around to yourself if you're actually not going to be of service to you? So there's a lot of good reasons, guys, that you know that you can become an entrepreneur, etc., etc. But before you take the next step, guys... Think carefully about what your personal motivations actually are, whether they're healthy reasons to pursue this business ownership or not. Because at the end of the day, you will go through all this burnout and you won't even realize why you're sick. 
You go through all this burnout, you re- won't even realize why you are resentful, why you're not even helping those people that you think you're going to be helping. Yeah? So, you know, the reasons of becoming an entrepreneur, they're, they're widely known or, you know, really put out there. But it's got to be you. It's got to be where you feel. Some of you might just be considering to become an entrepreneur, but it's for the wrong reasons. You know, some, some of you just because you hate your job, if you're going to hate your job right now, nine times out of 10, the thing that you're going to start a business in is exactly what you hate right now. What makes you think it's going to work? If you know what I mean. So I have very little patience with people that hate their jobs and as an excuse for them starting a business. Because if you hate your job right now, get another one, quit it in that order. But at the end of the day, I really hope that since this is like the last week of June, we are six months into the year. Are you doing what you're meant to be doing? Are you actually representing what you think you're doing? Or do you think at the end of this is going to be a participatory trophy? There's not going to be a participatory, um, what do you call it, medal or trophy. You got to put in the work and for you to continuously do it over and over again without the burnout, you got to know the reason why. In any case, if you want me to help you have a look at what you're doing or what you're working on right now or, you know, and, you know, analyze your passions and see how you're going, I'm more than happy to do that with you guys. In the meantime, thank you so much for tuning in. I uh, hope I see you guys tomorrow on a totally different topic.